chemical tests. Let's start with testing for gases. So if I want to know if a certain gas coming out of a test tube is oxygen, first I need to take a splint and set it on fire. Then quickly turn the fire off so that we have a glowing edge. Then take this glowing splint and place it into the test tube. If it's oxygen, it should relight. So oxygen will relight a glowing splint. Imagine you have a barbecue and the flames suddenly go off. What's the first thing you would do? Well, you'd get a fan and start to fan it. By doing this, you're pushing oxygen onto the glowing charcoals and it should relight it. Okay, next, testing for hydrogen. We're going to take a splint that's on fire, place it over the gas, and we should hear squeaky pop. When metals react with acids, they produce hydrogen, and the more reactive a metal is, the more hydrogen it produces per second, and the louder the squeaky pop. How about for chlorine? First, we're going to take damp litmus paper. It appears blue, however, when it touches chlorine, it gets bleached and you see white. How about testing for carbon dioxide? So we're going to put a bung on the tube and then bubble it through into lime water. Lime water is clay, however, if carbon dioxide mixes with it, you create a cloudy white precipitate. Testing for anions. Anions are negatively charged ions. Examples are carbonate, sulfate, and the halides, chloride, bromide, and iodide. Let's start with carbonate. Now we know that if a carbonate reacts with an acid, it produces carbon dioxide amongst other products. And we know that carbon dioxide reacts with lime water. So let's say we have a mystery solution and we want to know if it contains carbonates. We're going to add an acid, for example, hydrochloric acid, then bubble it through into lime water. If the lime water goes cloudy, that tells us our mystery solution did indeed have carbonate ions. Sulfates. When a sulfate reacts with barium ions, it produces barium sulfate. This is a white precipitate. And we can get the barium ions from barium chloride. So we have a mystery solution and we want to know if it contains sulfate ions. Now before you rush in and add the barium chloride, it's important to note that there may be some unwanted impurities such as carbonates and sulfites. If we added the barium chloride and these impurities were present, they would also create white precipitates. And then we'll get a false positive. So in order to prevent this, First, we're going to add dilute hydrochloric acid. This will react with the carbonate and sulfite ions, removing them from the solution. Then we can add our barium chloride. And this time, if it goes white, that means we had sulfate ions. Let's move on to the halides. If we have a solution of chloride or bromide or iodide ions, and we mix them with silver ions, which we can get from silver nitrate, they will produce silver chloride, silver bromide, or silver iodide. These will form solid precipitates. And they will all have a unique color. White, cream, or yellow. So, mystery solution does it have halide ions. Now again, before we add our silver nitrate, we have to make sure there are no impurities. This time, we're going to use dilute nitric acid, not hydrochloric. The reason we don't use hydrochloric is because hydrochloric acid itself has chloride ions. So we'll be adding the thing that we're trying to find out. So it'll be quite funny if we add chloride ions and at the same time we're testing if it's got chloride ions. Okay, so we've removed the impurities. Now we're going to add silver nitrate. And then you should form a precipitate. Also, depending on the color of the precipitate, if it's white, it means we had chloride ions. 
Cream means we had bromide and yellow means we had iodide. Now the next part is not for GCSE, however, it's quite interesting to understand. When we do this experiment in a lab, the white, cream and yellow precipitates can be quite hard to distinguish. So how do we make sure we've got the right ion? We add another chemical which will help us to make sure we know which ion is present. So if we have silver chloride, we can add dilute ammonia and it will dissolve, giving us a clay solution. With silver bromide, dilute ammonia will not have any effect. However, if we add concentrate ammonia, then it will dissolve. And finally, with silver iodide, dilute ammonia has no effect and neither does concentrate ammonia. So it will stay yellow. And that's how we can distinguish between the three different halide precipitates. Hey guys! If that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.